What's up everybody? Magnetizing experiments. I literally just got done recording the one previously, but I want to do another one. I want to try something interesting here. Um, so what I want to know is, what happens if you take a neodymium magnet and you magnetize it, and then you flip it over and you try to magnetize it again? In the same fixture, don't change the polarity of the fixture, just change the polarity of the already magnetized magnet. So this thing is uh, completely um, unmagnetized. Oh, I lied. It has a little residual. We'll need to heat that up and get rid of that, won't we? And um, so I'll do that. Why don't I just show you that process? Because uh, it is an interesting thing to watch the neodymium actually uh, cool off and fall. So what I've been doing to, to determine this is I've been standing it up like that. Okay, make sure it's hot enough. I had to overheat it because last time it held its magnetism. Alright, and quench it. And now when we pull it out of here, it's, it's still got a little, so I'm going to need to heat it up even hotter. So what I'm going to do is actually magnetize this and then heat it up really hot so that we know it's demagnetized. All right. Uh, so I've, uh, I've re-magnetized it. Now what I want you to watch here is I want you to watch it fall. Okay, this is interesting to me that this magnet literally tips left or tips right. It's demagnetized on one hand. Alright, didn't quite do it that time. Bubbly. Now we should be completely demagnetized. So let's run the test, see what happens. From my previous tests, I know that 11, 1125 volts is plenty. So I'm going to put it at 1200. Three point four six kiloamps. Okay. I will check the gauss. They don't know how to pronounce that guy's name. So we're about right. Maximum potential that I've been able to achieve out of this particular magnet. Now we're going to flip it over, okay, we'll check it again. Alright, now, let's do it again and see what happens. Now I'm going to get a wide angle shot in case it flies out, because that would be fun. Still magnetized. Now I know from my earlier tests that positive is up. And right now I've flipped this magnet, so this should be negative or positive. Might add that backwards. We'll do it again just for fun. Okay, so let's flip it. And we'll do this test one more time because it didn't do anything exciting, so it wasn't really exciting. So right now we currently have. 4.5 negative sticking out of the bottom. Four point five negative. Correct? Yes. Let's see if we can flip it. Negative to positive. I think we just did. We just did that test and it flipped. We'll do it again anyway. 
Why? Because we can't. Three point four six kilos. And the very fifth. Positive. Now, let's do it with a higher voltage because we can. Okay, so let's see what we got. We can get about five, there's five, one, five, three, five, five. Okay, five, five positive potential. That gives always seems to be a little less. Get all we can we get five and four point four point nine five. So again, full power this time. Three point three nine kiloamps. Okay. So what do we got? What do we got? Can we get the maximum out of it again? We had over five. Five point five. Five point oh five. Okay. Slightly lower. But it's awfully darn close there. But it flipped. So yes, you can completely reverse the polarity of a magnet in one shot. So let's try this. Look at that. It's actually higher negative. I probably just got to get it on there better. So here's what we're going to do. Now, since I know, all right, I know that you can flip this. Let's set it at a lower point according to my charts, which were in my last video. All right, let's set it to a lower point. Um, somewhere in the middle, so, um, let's set it at about 300, battery's probably dead, no, no, maybe not, 300, this curve, that's about the middle, 375, okay, let's see if we can demagnetize, so I'm going to do it one more high power, because I want to make sure it's pull up rise, and I'll flip it. Okay. Oh, there it is. You've seen me. You've seen me flip it. Let's see if we can neutralize it. 375. I'm going to put it at 300. Point six eight. Point six eight kilohertz. Still really strong. But let's see. Five. All right. I need to flip it back over. Do this full power again to find out which polarity it is. The end result should be a positive number.
see what happens. Okay. Have a negative number, four point something, pretty high. So let's go up. Two hundred volts. Point five six kiloamps. Negative number four point seven. Oh, good. And go up to three hundred volts. Point eight eight kiloamps. Still a negative number. Pretty high. Same value. Negative point four seven. So four hundred volts. There it goes. All right, one point one six. Still a negative number. I'm going to turn the chiller on. Alright, let's go 500 volts. Here it goes. 1.4. Still a negative number. And it's still cheap. Negative four point seven. Six hundred volts. One point seven three kilograms. Starting to lose my magnetism. It's at negative three point seven eight. Let's try it again without changing the power. We will find out if it matters. One point seven four kilograms. Negative three point seven. Did not change it. Let's go up half increments. Let's try six fifty. Because the ratio between capacitance and voltage starts to climb really fast once you get to the higher voltages, so you gotta kinda take it easy. So six hundred and fifty volts. One point eight nine kiloamps. Now we're down to negative one one. Let's do it again with no change. One point eight nine kiloamps. Negative one. Point one. So let's go a little more. Let's go seven hundred volts. We're almost to neutral. Almost to neutralization mode. Negative one point oh two kiloamps. Point seven five. It's pretty weak. 
won't even hold itself up. Again, oh, we're at a positive number. We just hit the positive peak. Let's try it again. See if we can add any more. Two point oh two kiloamps yet again. We added a tiny bit of magnetism. Let's flip it because now we hit our we hit our positive mark. Let's flip it. We have a positive number on it. Well, that's interesting. Check this out. That's an unexpected result. This side of the magnet, we have a positive. And this side of the magnet, we have a stronger positive. Positive. And in the center of the magnet, we have a negative. So we've managed to polarize this in a very weird fashion by magnetizing it in different strengths. Let's get the magnetic viewing film and see what that actually looks like. That's interesting. Let's see what we got here. Yep, it appears we actually have the poles there. See that? There's a slice there and a slice there. See that? We've managed to make a multi-pole magnet. Very interesting, just by using different strengths. Look at that little path on the edge. It's got a weird spot in it. By the way, this is how I can tell what I got. See that? This is a regular magnet. It's even got a little bit of a wave in it. See that? Okay. All right. Well, that was quite an interesting experiment. Um, had no idea of the results. If I could demagnetize it, it appears that demagnetizing doesn't quite work the same just by reversing and sticking, a, um, you know, a charge into a into a coil like this. So. Um, so that's interesting to me, that that's the result. Um, I don't know. I don't know what that really tells me. It tells me that heat's a good way to demagnetize, I guess, and not the magnetizer to reverse the uh, polarity. I know there are functions on magnetizers for demagnetizing, but I wonder what they actually do. So it looks like I'm going to be doing some research on the mag demagnetizing machine that they use that's hooked up to a bank like this. All right. Have a good day. Let me know what you thought in the comments. Peace.